and I'll turn the time and I'll turn the time over to Dennis and Andrew. Hello, everyone. I'm Dennis. I'm Andrew. We are known as the Crafty Lumberjacks. We're live from Astoria, Queens, New York. We're so excited today. Today, we're going to be getting crafty, making a DIY Faces of the Moon wall hanging out of polymer clay. Yes, we're also going to be teaching some tips on how to use polymer clay, how to make a template for it, how to marble, um, how to clay. hang it, how to also make it your own so it can fit your style. If what you saw doesn't really fit your aesthetic, don't worry, we got you. You can easily change change that. Yes, we'll also show you an easy way on how to make an easy tassel to add to your wall hanging. Um, let us know. I'm going to be following along in the comments. We also have Holly there helping us along. Thank you to Michaels for having us and for Fiskars for having us. Uh, you know, we have this whole tutorial on our blog and also Michaels is going to post the video about 24, 48 hours after this broadcast so that you can revisit it if you need to. And again, um, you know, use the hashtag make it with Michaels if you decide to share your project or you even just want to send us a project. Uh, we are known as the Crafty Lumberjacks on Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, all the things because you have to be everywhere. Yes, you know, and we have. Oh, go ahead. I was going to say, if you have any questions during the class, like please just type in at talk. We or ask. We love to talk as we do this. If you're making it, also let us know that. Just so if we're rushing through something, uh, you don't fall behind. We're really happy to help. So you, everyone's kind of working together. Yes, we have people in from Maryland, California. Maryland's my home state. Atlanta. So excited. Hi to Holly and hello. So awesome. Well, before we start, we also just want to plug our next class. As you can see, we love Halloween. This is just a small little corner of our apartment. We are fully decked out. Uh, we are doing a Halloween party on October 16th. Yes, or the 17th. <laughs> okay, we're really excited about that. We are going to be making these vintage style pinatas. Here they are. It's yes. going to be so much fun. And this is a, a family event, kid friendly. So please bring your kids, your whole family. It's going to yes. be a fun Halloween party. And we're also doing an epic craft giveaway on our Instagram. So we hope to see you there. Yeah, we're really excited. October about that. 16th. We just 16th. Heard. Yes. yes. All right, so we're gonna get started. Before we start, we're going to work uh, by making a template. Yes, yeah, so our Faces of the Moon, I'm sure everyone knows what that is by now. It's super trendy. Now, I think one of the hardest things to cut out is a circle, so I always like to use um, a glass or a plate, depending on the size. I like to look at the rim and really figure out, is that the size I want? Sometimes you draw and you'll see it, it'll look different. So just kind of pick a couple of glasses, go through your cupboards, grab them, and then use a piece of cardstock. I like something other than um, a thin piece of paper. I like something a little thicker just so it can withstand everything. And um, I'm gonna be, I guess we could use the top down now just so everyone can see. So I just, I'm gonna turn my glass over and I'm just going to trace it. So let's see. And right now, what's so great about this? Oh, something happened. Is it working? Whoops. Well, it's it good. We can here. still hear you. You're but, good. Um, okay, great. Um, now, what's so great about this, like Andrew said, is you can kind of cater this to your own style. You can make this a large faces of the moon wall hanging. We're just doing three bits of the faces of the moon, a full moon, a crescent moon, and then a waning moon, I believe a it's called, or the waxing. Or a waning. Now, if wax you on, know the off, difference, you know. I actually believe that the difference is like the side it's going on, if it's, um, but it's basically almost a half moon. So I actually like to start by just doing all three full moons. This will be my full moon. And then for the waxing or waning, I'm going to just line the glass up to about half. And then I'm going to trace it, just this part of the glass. And you're gonna see it's going to create a moon, just like that. And then I'm gonna Thank do the you. same thing. I'm just gonna move the glass instead of uh, halfway, I'm gonna move it more or towards the edge, just so it really gives me a crescent moon look. Yes, and we decided to do the template rather than cutting it right directly on the clay. Because like Andrew said, it's hard to get like a perfect circle or a perfect line um, so that this will be easier to just kind of trace the template rather than trying to kind of eyeball it or put the glass up against the clay. Yes. Um, so this will just help us there a little later on. Yeah, so now I'm just going to cut it out. I'm just using um, some OG orange handled scissors. They're our go-to for everything. And a tip I like to do is always, if I'm cutting something out of a big piece of paper, cut it down around it and then tackle your cut. 
And another tip I like, especially for rounded edges, is turn your paper instead of turning the scissors. That's going to give you uh, the cleanest cut. But what we always say is if it doesn't come out perfect, that's okay. You know the moon is not 100% flat. It has crevices and stuff like that. So if it Have comes out- there? Uh, I haven't yet, but apparently, <laughs> you know? well, apparently it's all opening up now, you know. Yes, Spaces. you can actually take trips to the right. Program. So maybe someday. But so if it's not 100% perfect, don't worry. I like to call it organic. Yes, always when when making something, if it goes wrong, that's the term you use. Yes. It's organic. It's, it's organic. supposed to look like that. Definitely. <laughs> all right, so I'm just turning my paper, not the scissors. What's so great about this project too, it's perfectly perfect for fall, but it's also kind of a, a craft that can be used all year long. We actually have a handful of different faces of the moon projects in our house that we've made that we keep out all year long. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I feel like the fall is always associated with the moon, but I do think there is just something about it that can be all year round for sure. And of course, if you want it for uh, Halloween, you can definitely, add a spooky look by changing the color just so it's more black and gold or however you want it. Or orange and black. Orange and black, of course, or purple. All right. And now he's just cutting his final template here. Now, when you are doing the, the crescent moon, you do not want to make it too, too thin just because the thinner you make it with the polymer clay, the harder it is to, uh, you know, to cut and to form in the end. So you don't want it too, too thin. If you have any questions, I know we're just starting, like, please feel free to ask if it's about anything Halloween related, clay related, Fiskars related, Michael's related, we're happy to talk. All right, so I'm almost done. There we go. Beautiful. Thank you. Very nice. So there we have it, our three phases right there. Lovely. Yeah. All right, now we're gonna start working with our clay. For this project, we're using polymer clay. It's always recommended to have clean hands when starting to work because that clay picks up dust, cat hair. We have a cat, <laughs> usually in all our projects, there's a little bit of cat hair, but you know, what can you do? And also what works great, which I'm sure a lot of us have this in, in your home now is um, an alcohol-based hand sanitizer um, that will actually help remove uh, clay residue. So you just want to make sure you start with really clean hands before start starting to work with your clay. And again, we're using uh, black, white, and silver clay, but What's great about this project is you can customize it to your favorite colors. Uh, you can use a pink, a yellow, uh, a green, you know, again, anything you want. Yeah. So the first step is to take your different colors of clay and then just cut some pieces off. I think you can just rip it with your hands if that is the easiest way, or you can use a knife or even actually a pair of scissors. I'm actually going to just grab these orange handled scissors and I'm just going to help even just section a bit off. Yes, and we're working with our craft mat here. We love this mat. It protects your surface. Uh, this one actually also folds up. Oh so we live gosh. in a small space. So it's great because we can store it under our couch, behind our bookshelf, but we use it all the time. And now before we start blending our colors here, well, you want to condition the clay, which means just kind of get it a little moving, you know? Or yeah. How would you explain that? Well, I mean, I think anyone who's worked with clay before knows like when it starts off, sometimes it's really hard, especially like polymer clay. Um, it can be really hard, especially if you've opened it before and then you've let it sit out or anything like that. Like it starts off hard. So you kind of want to soften it up. Yes, and just condition it. You want to just kind of activate it. Activate it, I like that. Yeah, so the way you can condition it is, um, it's as easy as Dennis said, you can just put it in your hands. That's just gonna help it uh, raise the temperature a bit. There we go. Yep, and it just says, Clay, I'm getting ready to work with you, baby. Getting ready, you know, be Here we go. the material, why not? <laughs> yes. Now we're gonna be blending our clay because you want it to look like a tie-dye effect, but yeah. we don't wanna over blend. Yeah, because if you over blend it, then it's really just going to create um, more of a gray look. It's not going to have this marbled effect that you're looking for. Yeah, actually, I'll show you our, our finished one here so you can kind of get an idea of what it will look like in the end. There we go. There we I go. Mean, look how so it's not is. like all blended. There's a little sparkle from the gray. So pretty. A lot of people use the polymer clay to uh, make jewelry. 
which yes. is always fun. And it, yeah, and a great tip, I know we were saving this for later, but a great tip is if when you have extra stuff, you can turn that into other projects. Yes. So the first thing you want to do after you've conditioned your clay is then you want to roll here, them out into put, logs. Um, so you know what, paper? that's a great yes, idea. Let's put parchment paper on our mat here. Dennis is the clean one. Yes, I'm the clean one. So he always reminds me, you do want to- You clean as you go. It's you a... clean as you go. That's my song. We live in a preschool over here. And it's just <laughs> the two of us and our cats. So you can imagine. Um, so the first thing you want to, or you know, you don't have to protect your surface too much with polymer clay because it will wipe off, but it will save the hassle. Especially if you have a mat like ours that has cut marks in it, it could get in that and it's kind of a pain to cut. So right. having a nice clean surface is always a good idea. So the first thing you're going to do after you condition it is just roll it out into logs. Yeah. And we just kind of eyeballed the amount of clay that we use because you don't want to make mix so much that you waste your clay, yeah. uh, but you don't want to kind of under, you right, know, grab you your clay to where you need back. to kind of start at the whole yes. process again. I usually over. <laughs> yeah. You over Because you can use your leftover clay for, yeah. um, you know, like he said, jewelry or, you know, for Halloween, we actually like to use clay to make eyes for all our skeletons that we purchase. Yeah. Because it just helps take them over, over the, the top, top to the yeah. next level. Should we show this one? I'm reaching you behind me. Oh, it's a top down. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, so as you can see, this is- So it's uh, like a dollar store bat, but we put the beads or the clay in the eyes and to just kind of that. give it like a three-dimensional look. And it really kind of elevates it. And this polymer clay would actually look so cute as little eyes. And I'm kind of looking at my clay and you kind of want to see like, what do you want your uh, main color to be? Do you want it to be a more white moon or do you want it to be more silver or more black? I think we're looking for more of a black. So we want the most of the clay to be black. And then you can kind of go from there. This is a good way. Oh, I way. just did three big strings. That's okay. Is That's that fine. Right? Yeah. When the moon hits your eye. Like a big piece of clay. <laughs> That's a moon That's a, hanging. <laughs> you know, we practice that. And, it and actually, now I forget the lyrics. I know, me too. All right. So then the next step is you're going to then just take your three logs and then put them together. And then you can just start twisting like a braid. Look how pretty this is. That is pretty, just like that. Yeah. And then you can fold it. I'm actually going to take some of this off. And you can like fold it down like this. And just press it together. Yep, and then I like to just roll. There's really, Wiggle it. you know, you just, just a little bit. You know, you really just want to start getting that clay together and you will really see the marble look as you go on. I just kind of twist and You know, fold. I used to work at Auntie Anne's Pretzels. This is oh taking me back. This is taking me back to my youth. You know, every time you go to the mall, you got to smell those pretzels. Oh my gosh, they're so good. They really are. Okay, so wow, now it's beautiful. Stretched. Thank Yours you. So good. And then, you know, if you have it like this, you could even just twist it in itself like that. You know, I'm having, this is a little hard over here, so I'm just going to hold it and then I'm going to twist it take it in. Wow, yours looks really good too. Again, if you have any questions or if we're moving too fast, let us know. I'm following along in the chat here and Holly is as well. Um, or if you just want to share any projects that you've made in the past with clay, we'd love yes. to hear. We've actually made a our, our own clay smoker house oh, yeah. where we lit incense in the in the smoker house right. and it was really fun. All made out of clay. That was actually air dry clay and that's another uh, good thing. If you only have air dry clay or you can only find air dry clay, that will work as well. You just need to let it What's dry. What's that that you just there, did there? You did a little curly cue? I did a little curly cue and then I just like, I nestled it into each other. Aww. What do you think of that? I love it. All right, I'm gonna keep on going just a little more. I mean, I think it's looking really beautiful. And it's probably hard to see on camera, but the um, silver is really nice. It has this little glittery uh, detail that's really noticeable to the eye. It's nice. Yes. All right. And now, you good. know, we always recommend when starting with new uh, craft techniques to kind of wait to see if it's a, a craft you want to invest in, because a lot of times, um, you know, people recommend you to buy all of these things, but sometimes you don't need that unless yeah, you're going to kind of- tools. And stuff right. Like that. Yes. Yeah. We like to pull tools from our house first before we kind of invest um, in all these tools. But we're about to start to roll out our clay. And now, of course, a lot of people like to use a pasta polymer clay. Yeah, they'll use like a pasta roller. Yes. But, you know, I worked in a kitchen. I was a, a chef in Soho for kids. And let me tell you, you don't want to use the same pasta roller you're using to eat on the clay. So <laughs> right, yes. If you don't want to invest in two pasta rollers, uh, you don't really need that. You can just roll it out. 
Yes, we're about to roll out our clay here. So you can purchase this. It's a little uh, clay roller. It's with the same where, where you buy the clay in yep. Michael's. You can find this there too. Um, if that doesn't work for you, you can actually use like a uh, a stainless steel like, like water, water bottle, bottel. which I actually prefer to use. Yep. And, and to get um, the clay, we, all, we want it to be all the same thickness around. So we have like a little hack for that where you can kind of line up dowels or pencils Mm -hmm. to kind of roll out your clay. Here, I'm gonna use this. Okay. And then this will kind of just help guide you and keep your kind of clay the same yes. width. That's like when you roll out cookies, have you ever done that? And all of a sudden half of your, your um, dough is like paper thin and the other side is really thick. Having those two guides will actually get you the same thickness, which I think is like the best tip because I think that's a really hard thing to master. I agree. That's why I said, let's do this as a tip. I like that, thank you. <laughs> and now you just wanna roll it out to about the same size as your template. And we're rolling this right out on our parchment paper and the cutting mat because we're gonna take our detailed knife here soon and cut out around. So again, you wanna protect your surface. You wanna make sure you have a cutting mat or something underneath your parchment paper there. Yeah. And we also, did you say this? I was kind of, um... I wasn't zoning while you were talking. I'm just wow. going to say that, but I was kind of wow. thinking ahead. Did you say it's a good idea to have it on the parchment paper because then you can put it right on your baking sheet? I didn't. Okay, I think that's a really good tip to have the parchment paper that you're going to use on your baking sheet when you bake it. So you can literally just transfer it by picking it up. I think that's a really good tip. I think another good tip is when you're working with polymer clay, you the de it depends how long you're going to bake it on the thickness. So having the pencils is really gonna make sure that each moon is the same thickness so it's going to bake at the same time. Yes. And now we're talking a little ahead here, but um, you wanna make sure you follow the instructions on the clay because each brand has a little different kind of uh, instruction on baking temperature. Yes. And uh, you know, some, they say, start it in a cool oven, you know, leave it to cool there after it bakes, you know, before uh -huh. taking it out. So you just really wanna make sure you check the instructions on the back of the package of the clay that you're using just for the most successful bake. Yes, definitely. Um, Tracy said, are you using, using Sculpty 3 or Primo or Craftsmart clay? You know, actually, <laughs> we're using a bit of Craftsmart and Sculpty at the same time. It was, uh, I don't, I think it was because they had the Craftsmart clay, they had the bigger packages, and we wanted um, to have extra for other projects. But, you know, we've worked with all three, and they all, to us, kind of work very similarly. We've never noticed, and blending them never seems to be a true issue. Would you agree with that? What? <laughs> <laughs> Were you zoning on Yeah, email? I was zoning. Oh, okay, it's payback. Yes. I always think of like moon over my hammies. Oh Whenever God. I think of like a phases of the moon. That's thing. because you also worked at IHOP. That's true. But I moon over my hammies is not IHOP. What? What is Moon over my hammies is Denny's. Oh, Denny's. Oh my God. Rudy Tootie Fresh and Fruity oh, okay. is IHOP. Okay, okay. okay, don't get it twisted. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Look how beautiful this is. So I, then now you can either choose. This almost looks like an agate, like uh, oh yeah. What are those slices called? Yeah, like those an, an rocks. Slice. You can make a little bookend or something like that. That's really pretty. I kind of like this side. This reminds oh, me gosh. of like Heg Bundy <laughs> from Married with Children. That makes no sense. Oh, I kind of put she like like I know. Well, we were just watching, so uh, <laughs> it's in my head there. All right, so you just want to. A good thing about the template too is you can check as you go. Of course, I'm looking at mine and. Of course, it's not the right size. So I just have to stretch it out just a little bit Mine more. is perfect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at that. I'll wait for Andrew to hang, uh, catch up here. Well, you know, I was just going to say something we love about working with clay. And I mean, crafting in general, it just really brings you back to being a kid. And it really is something such a soothing process. Now, if we weren't on this live, I'd probably take a lot more time just because I love just working with my hands and I do find it so relaxing, but it really is great when you feel stressed out, just having a craft to go home to. It doesn't have to be a crazy detailed craft, pull out some polymer clay, get out your Fiskars tools and just create whatever you want. I yes. mean, it's and so- And I was gonna say, what's so great about clay is that it's so versatile. Yeah. You can make so many different things with clay. Definitely. Let me check. These uh, Leslie said, lovely. Uh, Martinez, 81. That was the year I was born, 1981. Represent. They said, looks great. And I love that each piece is unique. 
Yes. That's something that we love too. It's almost kind of a surprise at what you're going to get. Yeah. And I kind of love that. There's this reveal moment of, oh my gosh, wow. You know, like I didn't think this, I mean, obviously I thought this looked nice, but I didn't realize how that really layered is. and that uh, really gorgeous is that looks. And look how gorgeous mine is. Well, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> how rude. All right. So you uh, think oh we're gosh. ready to cut I'm this almost ready. I'm going to make mine a little thinner just because yours looks a little thinner. Thank you. All right. And now the fun part is coming. Well, we were talking about versatility and I was, it kind of made me think of this craft knife, the detailed knife. Yes. Um, this is actually, I think our favorite Fiskars tool. We use it probably the most other than the orange handled scissors. It is this detailed blade. It is, so, I mean, it is in our, we have like a, a drawer that we can just reach and grab. It has a few items. It's like our scissors and our craft blade and a couple of other things. It's so great because you can cut out cardboard, balsa wood, um, paper, uh, clay, clay <laughs> and, and, you know, you could cut out, um, you could use clay. You could actually, instead of uh, drawing the template, you could actually just use the glass and go around it. But what we love about using the detailed knife is that it really gives you a nice crisp edge. Yes. Which is really important just for the finish to look. Yes, it's nice and sharp. All, All right. right, so now we're gonna cut out our phases here. I guess, do you like, well, I guess we can pick what side we like better once yeah. we're done. Very nice. So we're just gonna take our template, lay it on top, and then we're just going to carefully cut around with our, our detailed knife here. Again, uh, you know, I'm going to do my best, but we'll see what happens. And you see how easy it cuts. It and the cardstock is so great because I'm going to, sorry. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't want to start. Yeah, wanna... totally. And that's another great thing about using the parchment paper. You can just turn the parchment paper as you go. And it's really great, too, working with the craft knife, the detailed blade, too, because you don't, you can really control how hard you're pressing down. You don't need to cut that parchment paper. You can kind of feel it as you're cutting. Yes, I'm actually barely cutting through. Yeah. And if you see your clay starting to drag while you cut, that just means you need to wipe off your blade. It just means that um, your blade is a little dirty from the clay. Just take a uh, napkin, uh, even an alcohol wipe, anything, and just wipe that blade clean, and it'll help Here you get Here we go, nice big side. reveal, big reveal. Oh my gosh. Uh, Woo! So and nice. it actually looks pretty, it looks like Saturn almost. Well, it's but supposed to be the moon, moon, Dennis. I know, I, I kind of undermixed it where you overmixed. No, actually yours looks very pretty. <laughs> I'm looking on camera. It looks really nice. How that was, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> you talking about mine, right? We like a little uh, competitive. competitive yeah, of course. Uh, do you want to cut this one? No, you can't. You can do okay. it. Okay. All right. So I'm just gonna take it and I'm gonna go. See, Dennis cut out the easy one, and I'm gonna cut out the. Was it, that was easy. Uh, another tip too, when you're working with your de detailed knife is to just hold it like a pencil. Yes. And again, like Andrew said, you don't have to press too hard. The, the knife will do the work on its own. You just got to follow your template. There we go. Gorgeous. Okay. Sorry. Sometimes I'm sure, like, let us know. Do, when you're doing something like cutting or something detailed, do you stop talking? Because I do. <laughs> yes. Usually my focusing. tongue is sticking in. Now it's not because I don't want anyone to see that, but I have to be focused, you know? Now something, I actually don't know if you can see this. I'm actually taking, I, I like this tip as well. Just instead, if you're having a hard time making the full rounded cut, go in sections. So I went up to here and I stopped and then I cut again for there. And now I'm just gonna finish off the rounded edge instead of just trying to drag that knife the whole way. There we go. Okay, here's the big reveal. Did I did I do a good job? Ooh. Very nice. I like. I like it too. Let's see. Wow. wow. All right, that looks pretty good. I'm not really happy with this one part. I'm gonna just go back and fix it. What's great too about the the baked clay is that you can actually sand it after you bake it. Yeah. Um, you will be able to sand it down if you're unhappy with an edge or, you know, sand it down till uh, you're happy with the results. All right, that looks pretty good. And you can also shape it a little bit with your fingers. All right, do you want to do this last one? Sure. 
And now we're gonna kind of set this aside and we're gonna uh, teach you a storing technique with that in just a bit with all your excess clay. Or again, you can use it to make beads or like eyes, like we said, beady little eyes. Oh, very nice. Yeah. Mine now. See, I'm upset with mine, but why? Because I didn't mix it enough. That's okay. It's not okay. They all look different. I think that's like the great thing. Again, it's kind of like if it cuts a little imperfect, also it's organic. That's what we're gonna tell Dennis. It's organic. Nice try, Dennis. Wow. <laughs> Leslie said that mine was lovely. I know, lovely Leslie. That's so nice. I like that she's nice and supportive. Well, that's what crafting is all about. It's not so much about the end result. It's about the process. You know, and if you're really unhappy with it, if you're making it and you're like, you know, it really, you have all this extra clay, roll it out quickly and do it. And actually, Sculpey and uh, polymer clay in general, you just have a, you have a good amount of time before it dries. So you can go back and easily uh, re-roll clay from what you already have. Uh, that looks good. All right, very nice. So to store your clay, uh, this is the big secret here. You <laughs> want to store it in a zip top bag. Yes. That will kind of keep the freshness, um, you know, and kind of protect the longevity of the clay. Or if you want to use this right up, you can make another garland. You could do kind of whatever you'd like. But, you know, we actually uh, started this project uh, maybe a month ago, and we had in a zip top bag. We checked it yesterday. It was fine. It's still it fresh. really is yes. fresh. And if you are feeling nervous about that, you could always wrap it in saran wrap and yep. then put it in a zip top bag. But we found that just throwing it in a zip top bag, as long as it's sealed well, yeah. it will hold up. Definitely. All right. So now before we bake this, we actually have to punch a few holes in the pieces so that we can strand through our chain after they bake. So for that, we're just gonna use a skewer and just kind of eyeball where we want the holes to go. And actually use the, the back of the Oh, skewer. the back end, okay. And the only thing is you wanna make sure your hole is as large enough for your string or your yarn. Yeah. We're using a chain. So you just wanna make sure that- um, That it'll fit. Yes, because it will be hard to kind of, you can sand it and kind of scrape it out, but it'll be a little harder at that point, you know? I'm just going to go about a half inch down and poke a little hole, lift it to just make sure it went through. And then just kind of center eyeball it down here. Punch a hole. You want to do the other one? Sure. And then I'm going to do the same with this, the crescent moon. I like to spin it when I punch it, just like twist it a little as I go, just to make sure. And then I'm gonna eyeball it. The same, and then we'll do this last one. Very nice. All right. There we go. So that looks really great. Now, now we're going to transfer it to our baking tray. And again, keeping it on the parchment paper is really helpful. I'm just going to lift it and I'm going to put it right on. Now, our instructions, I think, are 275 in the oven for about 15 minutes. Now, a tip we like to do with any type of polymer clay we're working with is after it's done, we just like to turn the oven off and let it cool on its own for about a half hour before touching it. That's a trick I learned from an art teacher. I don't know. Yes, Leslie asked, what are we doing right now with the dowel? Oh, okay, so Leslie, we are just punching holes into um, the moons just so we can thread our um, chain through it when we're done. Yeah. Now, if you'd want to skip that step, you could easily glue your chain or your string to the back without it. But we just thought this added a nice uh, detail. Yes. We're going to go pop this in the oven. We have a swap out. Yep. Well, let's mm -hmm. go pop that in the oven. And then we're going to move on to our embellishments. Yes. For this, we're using a jewelry chain to hang it. Uh, you can kind of, what's great about this is you can kind of keep it as long as you want. Again, 
like we said, you can have multiple faces of the moon or just the three like we did. And we thought it'd be fun to add a little tassel to the bottom. So we're going to show you an easy way. Did they put multiple holes in the moons? Yes, we put multiple holes in the moon on the top and the bottom Let me show. of yeah. each piece because afterwards we're going to hang it with our chain. So we have a hole in the top, a hole in the bottom, centered in the full moon, a hole in the top, hole in the bottom, and then the same thing with the crescent moon. I'm gonna just wash my hands. All right, I'm gonna start making our tassel. Now, you can make a tassel in a million, We you can make a tassel in a million ways. Now, I am not an expert tassel maker, I will tell you that, but this is a really quick and easy way to make one. What you wanna do is when you buy your embroidery floss, keep it in the uh, little packaging. It comes with these little two uh, pieces of paper. And then I like to start by taking a piece of embroidery floss, and just threading it through the top. And then I'm going to just tie a little knot. That's actually how we're gonna hang it. So I'm just going to tie it. Now, if you have any other questions, this is a great time to ask. Yes, and you can ask us questions about this project, about Halloween, any upcoming holidays. Yep. Now I'm going to leave that and we can come back to that when we hang it. Now I'm going to, I need another piece of embroidery floss. Here we go. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to tie it around almost at the top. So I put the, I put the embroidery floss down and then I'm just going to lay this right over it, line it up where I want to tie. This is going to create that circle on the top. And then I'm just going to tie a knot. Yes, this is the easy way. This is tassel the easy, the easy way. way. Yes. I love it. All right, let us know in a comment. Do you like making tassels or do you not like making tassels? I feel like you either like it or you don't. Do you kind of agree with that? Yes, I feel like tassels were huge like a few years ago. They, were they really kind of big. slowed down a little bit. But they always add like a little extra something, you know? No tassels. No tassels. <laughs> you know, I was going to say um, when we talked about the uh, jewelry chain is what's really great is Michael's has a huge selection of jewelry. I'm sure everyone's seen it. You go down that aisle, you see so many different things. You can buy pre-made tassels if tassels are not your thing um, or any type of embellishment other beads or anything like that. Okay, so we have that. And then I'm just going to cut off these strands. Ashley asked, uh, do we have any other Halloween or fall projects coming up? Yes, we do. We have a handful of different lives for Michaels. You can also follow us on Crafty Lumberjacks at Instagram or TikTok. We post a lot of our tutorials there. And actually, we'll be doing a, um, uh, a pretty epic Halloween party, craft party, making these uh, miniature pinatas. Look how cute. Uh, we those have are. that vintage one. And Holly actually posted about the Halloween class. It is on um, the 16th of October. And that's a, a family event. So we'd love to see you there. And if you have any questions about that class, you can always write us on Instagram, anything like yes, that. Yes, that's one of our favorite things is that we love to uh, engage and interact with people, see what they're making, and just chat. Um, so we'll be there. Yeah. All right. So now I'm just going to cut off my tassel. I always like to cut it off a little longer than I really wanted. I can always go and trim it if that's what I want to do. And there you have a little easy, a little tassel, easy tassel. I mean, which, if, you know, I've seen people do these as little ghosts. I know. And I think really it's cute. so cute when they do a little, little white ghost. All right. I mean, that's really cute. So that's going to go on the bottom of our chain when we're all all done. Maddie said, oh my God, a ghost would be super cute. Yes, yes, we agree. I think a ghost is so cute. I also want to know in a comment below if you're um if you're a Denny's fan or if you're an IHOP what? fan. Where is this? <laughs> okay, I want to know. Oh my gosh. Or are you an Auntie M's fan or a Cinnabon fan? Well, every, you love both, of course. You have to. But all right, I'm gonna bring in our <laughs> so this is our swap out. Look how beautiful those are. As you can tell, they're different from the ones we just made because you really can't replicate them perfectly together. I mean, you can't replicate more than one. The clay is always gonna look different. But as you can see, 
They dry nice and hard. So that's great. If you feel like when you pull it out of the oven, if it's still a little warm, it's going to feel a little rubbery. So don't over bake it. Don't throw it right back into the oven just because it feels a little warm. Wait until it fully cools. You'll see it will harden. Don't under bake it. Don't over bake it. I know that's really vague and not very helpful, but um, if you over bake it, it will crack. If you under bake it, uh, it will just be too rubbery, but don't judge it by uh, by like the touch when it's warm, I guess is my Oh opinion. yeah, don't, yeah, don't touch it. We have we have a lot of equal opportunity eaters here. Oh, okay, great. Some people like Waffle House. Tassels remind me of old lady jewelry. Okay, then I skip the tassels. I also want to know what your favorite craft tool is in a comment below. Like we said, ours is the, the detailed knife. Yes. Uh, I want to know which or craft tool you use the most. I think that's a good question. I'm yes. always curious. I'm always interested. And people actually ask us that a lot. And typically it's our detailed knife. And we also like a good industrial wire cutter. Yes. All right. So now that these are done, um, a good tip is you can now, uh, you can find a polymer clay sealant and that will give you a, um, that will also give you like a nice shine to it. Oh yes, and I also wanted to say, I forgot when we were working that you can add texture to the clay, which I've yes. seen a lot of jewelry makers do. Uh, you can either put like bubble wrap or a towel on it. Oh yeah, um, that's actually, a good idea. Maybe should I get, or no, that's all right. All right. But all yes, right. and it will just kind of give you added texture to the, uh, to the moon here, which would be really pretty. That is really pretty, I always like that. All right, so here we have it. Now we're gonna start, um, adding the chain to our moons. Maddie said, I use my detailed knife for so many things, craft or craft not related. Yes. yes, I know we have ours. We have a few of these. We have it in our front front entryway cabinet. So whenever we get deliveries, it's just whoop, and yeah. we open our boxes right up. Dennis, All right, do you want to be doing this? Sure. Okay. Now it's time to just uh, put our faces of the moon together here. I'm just going to thread my chain through. Unfortunately, our swap out here, we made it a little uh, too small. So you kind of have to just do your best to thread it through. And I'm going to thread it through the top front. Here, would you assist actually? Because you yeah, can pull yeah, it from the, through. yeah. I will say a chain is a little harder because it has links. So it's easier to catch on to things. If you want ease, if you're doing this with kids, use a piece of yarn or string. It's just going to thread a lot easier. You know, and this kind of the look is up to you. We do this thread through the back here. Can you thread you it through it? the front? I feel like this is Indiana Jones right here. Well, like, <laughs> I don't know. It's, it's just, trapped. Yes. So carefully. And a good tip is you can see Dennis isn't just pulling the moon through. You're doing it section by section. You don't want to uh, rip the polymer clay like uh, close to where the hole is. And you also don't want to break that chain. And now starting with my next piece, I'm just going to kind of drop it through, thread it through. So you're starting with the front up and you're threading it down, correct? That's right. But again, if you like it, some people like to do like an exposed chain or rope, you know, they, that kind of looks really cool in the back there. So you can do that depending on what you get. And of course you can use string for this yarn, twine. even a wire twine, you know, whatever yeah. kind of thing that matches your aesthetic. You know, and if, or even if you're doing this for like um, Halloween, like maybe if you're doing this for Halloween, a Halloween craft, you might want to use like a black string or an orange yeah. string or even purple. We love purple as a Halloween color. Yes, I was also going to say this really makes a really cute charm. We're doing three moons, but you could do one moon. You could do two moons. Um, if you are doing one moon, then you only need to make one hole, kind of like an ornament. Yes. Actually, I was just thinking this would be cute, like little ornament. Yeah. We're actually uh, in the process of decorating our Halloween tree. Um, and actually something like this would look really cute. It would. Like as a Halloween ornament. Actually, it would have looked really, we, uh, every year we do a Halloween tree. Now, if you don't know what a Halloween tree is, it's pretty out there. It's basically a Christmas tree, but for Halloween. So we like to have themes. And one year we did a fortune teller theme. And this would have been really great. Yes. Fortune teller theme. It was very mystical. Awesome. So now we're just going to kind of, uh, I'm not going to, uh, you can glue these to the back or take them to the back. Uh, the chain actually provides a little more durability that it won't slide. Yeah, it kind of helps it hold. It just kind of like locks them in. But if you want it for um, long term or if you're giving it as a gift, I do think adding a little bit of glue or even some painter's tape 
to the back of the chains will just help help it really stay. This I was going to say also, I love the craft mat because it helps me measure things out that yes. the ruler is right there. So I can say, oh, okay, I think every box is an inch, right? Yeah. So it's like, I have two inches there. I can just line this up here and make sure it's even, you know, and I don't have to think too hard, which I, yeah, I like. Definitely. Okay. Now we're just going to, I guess you want me to slide these towards the bottom? Uh, yeah, if you want. Yeah, I guess so. Because are you going to add the tassel? I am going to add the tassel. I know we have some tassel haters. You can add a pom-pom or you can add some kind of um, psychedelic like little charms or something on the bottom would look really cute. Or you can just leave it all natural. You don't have to put anything down there. I also think you could, if you're not into moons, if you want something else like stars, you could do stars. You could do someone's name. That'd be cute. That would be really cute. Or like for a nursery or something yes. like that. Now, if you're going to do something a little more intricate, a tip we always love is to use a clip art, free clip art to use as a template, then cut it out. So if you wanted a name looking for bubble letters would be a great idea. And then you can just um, add that or like put it on top, cut it out and use that as a template. Debbie said jump rings to connect would be better and save the chain. Love a good jump ring. You know what? Can, can you put the moons on the gray part, please? Can you put the moons on the gray part, please? Maybe they're having a hard time seeing it. Oh, yes, maybe. Yeah. Once we kind of get this in, I'll kind of move it out. So you can okay. See. Actually, do you want to grab maybe a piece of parchment paper? Sure. Stars at the bottom. Yes. And Andrew's just threading through the, the um, tassel there on the bottom of the chain and the chain link. I don't know who gave the tip about the jump rings, but I was like, that is a good idea. Even just to add the tassel, a little jump ring would be easy, but it just thread right through. So I just literally uh, thread it through and now I'm just gonna tie it. Those are my cute earrings, the smaller scale, obviously. Oh my gosh. Yes, or yes. like a huge one or even a necklace. <laughs> I'm into that. Yes. All right. It could be your Halloween costume. It you really make like a be. giant faces of the moon necklace. Oh my gosh. And yes. you go out on the streets and you cast spells. <laughs> Only thing to do is jump over the moon. Does anyone know where that's from? Please let us know in a comment. And if you don't, you might be too young. Love it. I didn't see anybody post their favorite tools except for Maddie. All right. Leslie asked, could we make more faces of the moon for this or will it be too much? Absolutely. No, it would you never be more. too much. Do you know where our other clay faces of the moon is? is uh, it in the I cabinet? believe it's in that cabinet. Now, I believe now if anyone, I don't, I'm not, uh, I don't know too much about the moon, but I believe there's a phase for every single day. I think that makes sense. Um, so you could do as many phases as you want. All right, here it is. I mean, I think that's really beautiful. Now for the top, what you can do is just cut it off and then you could even add a jump ring. Thank you for that wonderful tip right to it. And that'll be really easy to hang. Glue gun, scissors. Yes. Here's our other faces of moon clay. We'll show you. Uh, we did the same thing. It was the bait clay. Uh, we painted on this. We added like stars and this one we actually attached. So we did multiple here for this one. We did five phases. Um, this one we painted, we added a glaze, and then this we kind of strung together with just a uh, paracord. Yeah. And I don't even think we glued this one. No, because no. we like to slide depending on where we like hang it and all that. Yeah. But we cut this one out also with our- Yeah, with craft. our detailed knife. Actually, we used the lid of a jar and I think we just went around. Since we were just doing right. circles, we just put the lid right on it, used our detailed knife and just went right around. And we've had this for about six years. <laughs> yes, It's like one of our favorite things. I'm actually surprised. It's and what's so great with these kind of wall hangings is it really helps fill up those awkward areas in your home. Yes, Like you might have a narrow area or a small wall. Something like this looks so great because it's lengthy and it will kind of um, make it look not as awkward. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I love that. I mean, when you're thinking about covering your wall, it really, you want to think of different shapes. You want to think of different sizes. So doing a wall hanging like that, you really can get maximum, uh, your maximum look. You could also make this more um, horizontal. Uh-huh. And put it on like a, a fireplace mantle or something yes. like that. Yes. Now, if you're going to do that, you would want to do your holes 
horizontally, if that makes sense. So instead of doing your holes, like <laughs> right? This, yes, you yes. would want your two holes like this. I, I didn't understand at first, but now I get it. Yeah, you would hang it like a garland. Yes, very cute. Uh, one person knew that it was from Rent, Patty. Oh, Patty. I'm an original Rent head. I saw the show over a hundred times. I used to sleep on the streets of New York City for tickets. And here I am, years later, still quoting Rent. <laughs> Wow, we really got to know a lot about you today, Dennis. I know. You worked at NTS, I am and I yes, have... rent head, yes. all of Anything it. else you want to share with the class? Can you please share how you made the white faces of the moon? Yes, we actually have that tutorial too, um, but it's literally the same process. We rolled out the clay, cut it out with our knife. Yep, we, we did holes. Now for these bigger holes, what we used were um, straws. So we just put a straw in. And actually, Dennis said this was baked clay. But it was actually air oh, dry. Air dry. Clay. That's right. That's right. And that's right. remember I said, like, you can make the same thing out of air dry clay. It really works well. What we love, sorry, that's some putty because when we put it on the wall, we like to putty it just so it's nice and flat. Right. But what's really great about air dry clay, uh, too, is that you can paint it really easily. And actually, we have, you can see it here, we have that, um, that, uh, glaze. that glaze that I was talking about. You can see how it looks. It just gives a nice um, shine. Yeah, a nice finish. Yeah, but I think this one without the thing looks really great and has I a nice so finish. I think so too. I really because don't think it has that gray that. glitter yeah. that looks really pretty and it kind of sparkles in the light. You see it? I'm trying to hold it up so you can see. But Let us know in a comment if you were going to make this, what colors you would choose. Because I'm always fascinated. When we were at Michael's, there were so many different colors to choose from. And I am a, I'm a very slow shopper. Very Dennis slow. is a very fast shopper. So I like to sit there and Dennis is like, okay, I'm going to go to the other aisles. And I'm like, wait, I want to go with you. So I, we picked our colors and I, well, I love these colors because they're classic. They're perfect for the fall. They're perfect for all year long. But like, what colors would you choose? Yes, we want to know. Uh, I guess that's it for the top down. If you want to bring it back to the main camera, we can say Ooh, hello. Is my face goodbye. ready? Hello. Someone said, I would love more of a blood moon. Ooh. Oh, I, I like, like the that way idea. Thing. I think that's uh, really cool. Maybe for Halloween hanging, I would do black, gray, and maybe a purple. Love yes. that. Oh, you know what else is a great idea? I'm just, I'm just thinking if you, if you wanted this, not always for Halloween, but you want to add a Halloween touch, uh, Michael sells little uh, miniatures. You could find like miniature bats and put them almost oh, like it's cute. like a silhouette, or yes. you could cut it out using your craft knife. You could just uh, print out some uh, clip art and then cut it onto cardstock and just put them on little bats, maybe even a witch. Oh my gosh. I need so a whole other cute. class to do that. So cute. Wait, let me just slide down the moon here. We had so much fun today. Again, so uh, we fun. have this tutorial on our blog and Michaels will be posting this video in about 48 hours. If there's anything that you uh, need to review or go over um, yes. again. Any other questions, uh, write to us us on Instagram. You can always email us, whatever is better for you. Yes. Holly asked, can we explain what we love about the detailed knife more? Maybe explain the blade change feature. Oh my gosh. Yes. So this is great because there's some craft knives out there um, that when you finish the blade, you have to buy a whole new craft knife. Well, this guys has really made it so easy to switch the blade. You can see, let me see. Can you see there? All you have to do is pull this out and that'll unlock the blade. What I also love is Fiskars has different blade tips. So depending on what you're working with, it really uh, makes it super easy to cut so many different materials. So if you want to swap out your new blade. Yes, they have a rounded right edge in. blade, which we actually yes. use for our houses that we cut out of balsa wood, that was which really is helpful. like a thin wood. Um, and the knife did so well with that. But I will say I am a lazy crafter. And what I love about Fiskars is that you really don't have to change the blade often. They're super durable. They stay sharp for so long. So it's not something that you have to switch out every week if you're tackling something big. Like I think this is our newer one, but we have an older one that we haven't changed this in probably two years. <laughs> probably two years. And we craft with these a lot. So those yes. are some of the things. And they also are. have like a cute little kit. I don't yes. know where we have our kit. But they have a little kit with magnets so that all the blades kind of stay yes. in place. And you can pop them right in. I also have to say I love this cap because if you are like us and you have just drawers of things, having a cap on there is just so helpful. Um, but those are some of the things we love. I mean, it's just so versatile. Like someone said, I use mine for crafting. I use it for things that have nothing to do with crafting. We do the same. Yes. Any other questions before we sign out here? Again, please join us. We're going to be showing uh, how to make these mini pinatas 
for our Halloween party with Michaels and Fist Bars. If you make along with us, use the hashtag make it with Michaels. Yes, and if you make one of these or make anything that we've made, tag us too so we can reshare it. Also, we're gonna be doing a really big giveaway on our next slide with Fist Bars. So be sure to join. It's gonna be really, really fun. Yes. Wow. I feel I feel so far. I'm, right I'm ready to hang it too. I think we have a perfect spot right over there. What do you think? I was thinking over there, but all right. Well, we'll figure He's that the out. boss. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank we you, hope everyone. to see you back here soon. Bye.